Hi, welcome to this section of the Physics 2 Tutor Volume 2. In this section we're going to pick up directly where we left off in the last section in simple harmonic motion and Hooke's Law. In this section we're going to tackle several problems to really bring that stuff home. We've drawn a lot of pictures of waves, we've drawn a lot of kind of giving you a feel for what these various terms really mean, but now it's time to put pencil to paper and show that you really understand how to use the equations. The equations are not really that bad, but you really have to understand the terms, otherwise you'll never get anywhere. So let's just go right into the first problem. An object who's undergoing simple harmonic motion takes 0.25 seconds to travel from one point of zero velocity to the next. If the distance between the points is 36 centimeters, calculate the period the frequency and the amplitude of this motion. This is one of those problems where I told you that you would have probably on your test where you would be given something, maybe a diagram, maybe a paragraph, and you would have to identify the period, the frequency, um, and the amplitude because those are the main parts of what an oscillation looks like if you graph it. And you may actually be asked to graph it too. Uh, we're not going to do that here, but you may ask to be graph it, to graph it too. So you're given some information and it's up to you to, to figure out what these things are given what you have. So the first thing you really should do is draw a picture because it really helps. So here's a wall. It's simple harmonic motion. I like to talk about springs. Okay, I really like to, to talk about springs because they, they just they seem to make a lot of sense to me. Okay, so we have a mass here. An object is doing simple harmonic motion. It takes 0.25 seconds to travel from one point of zero velocity to the next. So here, let's say it's stretched all the way. Let's say here's an intermediate position, okay? And then let's say here is the compressed position right up against the wall, right? This, the middle position, we're gonna call that the rest position, right? Because right between the two extremes is when the thing is totally at rest. In other words, if I were to walk up to the spring and not even touch it, and it's just sitting on a table connected to a mass and not even touching it. This is its normal position. Pull it back, let it go, it's going to go be between these two extremes right here. You have to read into what the problem is saying. It says, it takes 0.25 seconds to travel from one point of zero velocity to the next. You have to know that this is zero velocity, and this is zero velocity. Because here is where the spring just slows down to turn around, and here's where it slows down to turn around. So at those two moments, at those two extremes, the velocity is zero. All right, so it takes between these two extremes 0.25 seconds to go from here all the way to here, from here all the way to here. But the first thing you want to try to calculate, because it's easiest to calculate, is the period. So let's go ahead and say we're going to calculate the period first. Well, you might be tempted to say that the period is 0.25 seconds, but it says, remember, that the period is the distance it takes to go from one complete cycle. It would have to go from here over to here and then back to where it started to be one complete cycle. So really, the period is 0.25 times 2, right? Because it says right here, it takes 0.25 to travel from one point of zero velocity to the next. But for one period, it has to go all the way back to the beginning again. So we have to multiply by 2. So the period is 0 0.5. And what's the unit? It's seconds. That's how long it takes for one, for one cycle. And if we want to you know, just, just get a little more information, we can kind of try to draw uh, a little graph of that. So we say we pull it back, and it goes down. And then it goes up like this. So this point on the graph is where it is here. This point on the graph down here is where it is down here because it's in the negative direction on the other side of the rest position down here. Then it travels back up to here. So this distance here, this is right here, 0 0.25. The time it takes to go from one extreme to the other, but then we have to go back. So this is one second. I'm sorry, 0.5 seconds. Right there, and that's why the period is 0 0.5 seconds. So part B, we want to find out what is the frequency. So we found the period, which was always labeled T. It's very simple once you know the period to find the frequency. The frequency is always 1 over T. That's a formula, an equation that we had uh, in the last section when we talked about all this stuff. You always know the frequency when you have the period and vice versa. So all you do literally is just take 1 over 
t we found to be 0 0.5. So the frequency is 2. And what is it? It's the unit 2 hertz. Two cycles per second. This is not angular frequency. We haven't had a need for angular frequency yet. If you needed angular frequency, you would take this and multiply by 2 pi. But that's not what the problem asks for. It just asks for the straight frequency in hertz. Okay? The last thing we want to do is find out what the amplitude is, which is the distance from the rest position. Now, it says right here, if the distance between the points, between these points of zero velocity, is 36 centimeters... What is the amplitude? What it's telling you is the distance between this zero velocity point and this one here is 36 centimeters. But that's not the definition of the amplitude. The amplitude is always the distance from the rest position up to a maximum. So you need to take this number that you were given, 36, and divide by 2. Okay? So 36 divided by 2. 